back from Breakaway, at Com the CompTIA show, and we're here with um, Carrie McDonough. Yeah, that's Get right. It right. I'm trying real hard. Who's the um, operations director of U.S. Small Business Channel Sales, and with somebody who's a fellow Torontonian that I've known for pretty much ever, um, Andrew Sage, who uh, Canada wasn't big enough for him, so he went over and became vice president. Um, in the U.S., uh, the U.S. for the SMB market, and when he found out that that wasn't big enough, he took on the world. And we were just talking about what's next, and you know, which which planet or which galaxy. Um, but that's okay Thanks because that yeah. <laughs> no problem. But that's okay because I think Cisco's growing right along with you, aren't they? Absolutely. Um, the small business marketplace in the channel like how important is that small business marketplace because that's a place that at one point Cisco didn't even know existed mm -hmm. why all of a sudden such a huge effort on it well, I think that um, about three or four years ago um, when we took a look at our channel business uh, we realized that um, you know as we segmented the market there was an opportunity for Cisco to grow and our partners to grow in small business so the small business customers were taking technology more seriously but clearly they had to lean um, completely on the reseller to make it happen and um, when we looked at the market it was a big addressable market seven billion dollars worldwide is the addressable technology spend in, in networking and the sort of related technologies and we took a look at our market share of that seven billion and it was pretty low it was well below 20 percent and so um, some of the senior executives at Cisco, led by Sue Bostrom and Keith Goodwin, who's the Worldwide Channels lead, uh, took the opportunity to the board of directors at Cisco and said, you know what, if we put some money and energy into this, we could take a market where we've got sub 20% uh, share with our partners and we can, you know, we can create growth, not only for Cisco and our shareholders, but also for our channel partners. So that was three years ago and this is now. And where are you at now? You know, it's a little bit difficult uh, to talk specifics at this point because we're in our Cisco quiet period right now. Our earnings come out tomorrow, so uh, we can't really talk about the numbers at the moment. But they haven't gone down. Well, the, the interesting number is the market share in the last quarter in small business is uh, continuing to go up, and that was our that was our objective. We've got lots of room to grow still, but we're making good progress. Carrie, uh, how? Yeah. How are you finding the industry in the, like the SMB part of the marketplace in the U.S.? Would you call it a hot market, uh, lukewarm compared to? So, if you take the small business, the mid-sized business, and the enterprise, how would you break that down? Well, they're all important, but from a small business perspective, there are uh, you, know, you, you know small businesses rely on their partners, right? As really their IT staff. So, it's it's a hot market in that. Many of these small businesses, since they use them as their trusted advisor, their IT staff, they, they depend upon them. And then they use technologies to help them grow, to better serve their customers. So all the things that maybe enterprises do, but they, they do it in a more technical way. Small business partners working with small business customers do it in a way that are more specific towards helping small business customers. Because many times, um, small business customers are using small business partners at the same time that are doing you know, helping them grow their business. So it's, 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 it's a big move for us uh, with Andrew, not only on a worldwide responsibility, but in the U.S., we have an entire team dedicated to small business sales that we like to say to, through, and with our partners. So it's, it's, a, it's a true dedicated effort for Cisco. Yeah, so with all the new things that are coming on in the industry, so we have, you know, the MSPs and we have SaaS and we have Pass and any other letter you want to put in front of AAS, better get that right. Um, and then you've got obviously the cloud and the private clouds and the public clouds and all that. The way that we go to market is changing dramatically. But for the most part, the VARs aren't yet. They're starting to. If you were, let's suppose that for whatever reason, the two of you decide to go into business, but you want to open up the business, but you want to stay working for Cisco. So you want to open up a VAR organization. And so you do a search around the world for the perfect person to run this business for you. Mm -hmm. What would that DNA of that person look like? To run the VAR business? To run a VAR business for you in the new world. Yeah, what would you, what sure. qualities do you want that guy to have? 
I think it's a great question. Um, you know, I'll, I'll kick it off just by saying that um, you know you said that our our community is in a transition period, and you're absolutely right. It's been in a transition period for thirty you know, years. Thirty years, exactly. And the movement has been especially accelerated in the last ten years toward this re recurring revenue business model. Right? So if you look at the spectrum of partners, um, you know the ones that we think stand the best chance of being very successful in the future are the ones that have embraced managed services in the last five to seven years and have gotten the profit contribution of a managed service practice up above the sort of 50% mark. So they're not relying solely on hardware resale, they're not relying solely on break fix reactive services, they're beginning to get more uh, profitability from the ongoing revenue streams of managed services. And then that requires a mindset change inside that partner because you've got to sell a uh, business solution to the customer, it's a little bit less transactional, it's a little more relationship focused. Um, you got to implement some new practices because, you know, if you're not showing up on site every day, then the customer tends maybe to get a little bit of out of sight, out of mind syndrome, and so you got to set up, you know, quarterly business reviews to make sure you maintain your presence in front of the customer. So practices have to change. I would say the first thing I'd be looking for is somebody who uh, is willing to change um, the, the business model, has had a track record of transitions, and is willing to take a look at it in a different way and think more of a business approach. Yeah, I think one of the comments on that is everything changes except the people. And I think in this industry, if they adhere to that policy, they're going to be gone. You know? So you're talking a hybrid model. Mm -hmm. I would definitely, 100%, I can't understand these people. And I've spoken to a whole bunch of them even here at this event, and this is a higher end of our, and yet I'm hearing them say, oh yeah, well we're a pure play MSP. And I just sort of look at them and go, so in other words, you're leaving the door wide open for your competitors to come in and take your business away from you? And by the way, if that means you're leaving your customers out to hang, you know, out to dry, you know, like, I mean, I don't understand. It. Maybe you can put, shed some light on that, but if, do you understand that model? You mean a pure play? A and pure a play, man. You know, in, in the small business space, you have millions of customers here in the U.S., right? So you have to be able to scale to them. And many small business, some small business partners, many small business partners have chosen to do that through a pure managed services play. It's just the business model that they've accepted. Now, at the same time, they've got a pretty good automation around what they're doing. They're touching more customers. They're monitoring more. And they're doing it through ways that are a little bit different, but maybe a lower cost model for them, right? So then it's, then it's, you weigh that against what the customer is really expecting, right? Do they want, you know, more of that hybrid model or do they want that pure managed model? I think it's both. At some point, uh, there's got to be a modem, there's got to be a router, there's got to be things there, and they're going to break. Not not Cisco's product. No. Some people buy other products, you know, and they break. And so, that's great. What, what's that? What's that MSP going to do? He's going to say, oh, "Sorry, I don't do that." Well. That's not, right. that's not right. servicing their customer. And I think that's a big, you know, uh, it, when you start to talk about cloud computing and, and, you know, which I suppose you could conclude is the evolution of uh, managed services. But, you know, again, it falls into the category of recurring revenue business model. Um, the role that the network plays in cloud is going to be huge because no matter, to your point, no matter how many applications you outsource to the cloud, um, you know, the day that your only browser's on your laptop and a network, you still need the network, you still need right. that physical connectivity, you still need the security, you still need the mobility. And so clearly for, uh, for a reseller that's working with Cisco, we think there's an opportunity to, um, to really double down on a practice that prepares a customer to run their business in the cloud. Right. You know, gets them ready for off-site backup, gets them ready for, um, uh, for the security they're going to need if all their data is in the cloud somewhere, right? So there's lots of opportunities.